We have a lot of different frequencies in the brain. Alpha, theta, delta, gamma, high beta, and low beta. So this is someone's raw EEG that we captured. We placed a skull cap on her and uh, we recorded the information and downloaded it on our computer. Like a prism, when you place it next to white light, we can actually filter out red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Much like that, we do this skull cap and we put it into our computer program to extract different frequencies. From this data, we can actually generate a report and it'll tell us what parts of her brain are talking too fast, which parts are talking too slow, which ones are too high in beta in different parts of the brain, which ones are too low in theta in other parts of the brain. Here's her nose and here's her ears and we can see different parts of the brain with different colors. They all mean certain things. A nice dark green means normal. Anything that's a little bit yellow or red or orange or blue are, are kind of a, an alteration from the norm. And so we take those symptoms that a person might have after an injury and then we relate it to the brain map. After the accident, after the fall, after uh, the blunt trauma to the head, did we have problems with cognitive issues, memory issues, headaches, slurred speech, problems keeping up with conversations. And then we can start making uh, training sessions that can help bring this back to normal. If someone's having trouble sleeping, they might have low delta in a certain part of their brain. So we can actually develop a program to increase the delta, allowing them to have better sleep. If someone has ADD or ADHD, they might have too much theta going on in the front of their brain we can then develop a protocol to lower the theta. So we can take the brain and then we can actually twirl it around and we can see which parts of the brain have been affected. Her traumatic brain injury discriminative analysis tells us the probability of her having a traumatic brain injury. It shows that she has a 99.5% chance of having a traumatic brain injury and it's at a 4.47 severity. What we can do is determine from this report which parts of her brain are not communicating as well as they should. Is the temporal lobe talking to the amygdala? Is the parietal lobe talking to the occipital lobe? This is a person that had a car accident and had her brain rattle in her skull. Her QEEG actually shows some problems in the front of her brain on both sides. She had major symptoms after, very depressive thoughts, anger. So what we did was we did a brain map and we looked at her symptomatology and different issues and her personality changes. And we came up uh, with this and it shows in her high beta, a lot of reddening in front of her head. That's a three, it's a grade three and it's right in the frontal lobes. And after we did a series of 30 treatments on her, we can now see all that redness gone in the front of her head. What was so amazing is she's living a normal, healthy life without a lot of emotional traumas and no more depression, no more anger. And so um, it's kind of nice when we can correct those imbalances. Here we have a different software system set up where we can actually see different slices of the brain and uh, different frequencies. Here we have the delta, and we can actually slice it, and we can see different parts of the brain and where we have deficiency in delta in the back of her brain. This person actually had a blunt trauma to the back of her head. So we can see a lot of different slowing in the delta fields in the back of her brain. Here we have one, two, three hertz. That is delta. Four, five, six, seven, we have theta. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We're looking into the to alpha range. So we can actually see different parts of the brain in different frequencies, make their changes and show why they're not communicating with other parts of the brain.